One of the best ways to get faster results in any area of your life is by learning from other people's mistakes. This way you don't have to make those same mistakes yourself. Not only have I made a lot of these mistakes with fat loss myself, but I've also worked with thousands of clients in my gyms and online that came to me after trying so hard to burn some fat without any success. No matter what they did, they still couldn't see any results in the mirror. No matter how much they worked out and dieted, they couldn't burn their stubborn fat away just because of some very common mistakes. Mistakes like thinking that they had to do hours of cardio every week to be successful, or they had to count their calories and eat five to six small meals a day every day just to see some body fat come off. So before you go wasting your time making these very easy to correct mistakes, watch this video because it'll speed up your progress by a lot. First, I wanna start with a mistake that you don't hear about too often when it comes to fat loss, and that's not focusing enough on lean body mass. So many people get caught up in doing whatever it takes to burn fat, whether that be doing cardio every day of the week or decreasing calories to extremely low levels. I've had clients that have even come to me after cutting their calories lower than 800 per day, yet they couldn't lose any fat. After working with them for some time and helping them increase their lean body mass, these clients are actually able to easily lose weight and burn fat at a much higher calorie range. If you find yourself continuously cutting calories and upping your cardio, yet the fat doesn't seem to budge, it may be a good idea to focus on your lean body mass instead. Not only can increasing lean body mass increase your resting metabolism, but more importantly is the effect that it has on many different hormones in your body. Hormones like leptin, ghrelin, adiponectin, resistin, and insulin, they all communicate with your cells, including your fat cells, and they tell them when it's time to release fat or store fat. Your body composition has a lot to do with how these hormones function in your body. For that reason, if you're only focusing on burning fat, but you're not focused on building muscle, please understand that you're gonna hit a wall. You need to increase lean body mass to support fat loss, especially if you go from being sedentary for years to suddenly working out. Over the years of being sedentary, you may have lost a lot of muscle mass. In fact, it's very normal for people to lose about a pound of muscle every two years after the age of 25. This can create a situation where you might be working harder and eating cleaner than someone else that has a higher lean body mass, yet you're not getting nearly the amount of results that they are. Focus on your lean body mass. By increasing muscle over time, it'll make the entire process easier. If you're not weight training, make sure you start and focus on progressively increasing the weight load that you use over time. Let's move on to the next mistake, which is one of the biggest mistakes that people have been making for a long time and they continue making today. Treating all calories equally. If you still believe that losing weight and especially burning body fat is all about just counting your calories taking in and then subtracting the calories that come out from exercise, then you're not seeing the entire picture. A calorie is not just a calorie. And just to prove that, I think we can all agree that 100 calories of vegetables and 100 calories of ice cream is not the same thing and it won't have nearly the same effect on your body. In regard to fat loss, one of the greatest factors that we have to consider is how much insulin is released based on the specific type of calories that you're eating. When a lot of insulin is released throughout the day, not only does it prevent fat loss, but it also encourages your body to store energy as body fat. The types of calories that spike insulin the most are under the category of carbohydrates in the form of simple sugars. Now this doesn't mean that all carbs are bad, nor does it mean that you can't burn fat while even eating a high carb diet. But once again, when you compare the carbs from cake and cauliflower, you get two completely different effects on insulin levels. Simple sugars will spike your blood sugar the highest and your body, it's gonna be quick, very quick actually, to store simple sugars as fat. A lot of people try to burn fat with so-called healthy drinks like orange juice for breakfast and easy to cook meals like low calorie frozen microwavable dinners because they feel impressed by the low calorie count, but they never even look at the sugar content. And that huge amount of sugar will stop fat loss in its tracks every time. Now sugar isn't the only carb that can spike insulin levels. Even if you overeat healthy carbohydrates like brown rice, quinoa, buckwheat, and even beans, you'll still have a more steady insulin spike, but nevertheless, your insulin levels will be elevated throughout the day. The good thing about these healthy carbs is that they're all loaded with fiber, allowing you to take in a lot less before you feel full. 
Which is why I do recommend that if you're eating a higher carb diet, you stick predominantly to healthy, slow digesting forms of carbohydrates because those sources will naturally limit your intake. Now, I don't want everyone to just assume that carbs are the worst type of calorie because they're not. That's very important. Protein can also spike your insulin levels, especially dairy-based protein sources. A lot of diets advocate sticking to protein sources like skim milk, yogurt, and to constantly drink whey protein in place of meals. Well, the problem with this is that whey protein and a lot of dairy-based sources are very insulinogenic. Again, this doesn't mean that you can't have a whey protein shake after your workout, but if you're just randomly adding protein shakes throughout the day because you think it's gonna help you burn more fat, you're in big trouble. Even though cream and butter are not really insulinogenic, milk of all kinds, including yogurt, cottage cheese, and anything with casein or whey in general, elicits a significant insulin response. If you've been struggling with burning fat for a while and you're having a lot of dairy products, try to cut back a little on the dairy. The point is that when trying to burn fat, you don't only want to focus on limiting calories. You also want to focus on what contributes to rising insulin levels and what contributes to lowering them. Speaking of lowering them, we can move right into the third mistake that I always see, and that's this idea that you have to eat more meals throughout the day to lose weight and burn fat. This is simply untrue. One of the fastest ways to burn fat, where you could literally burn a pound of fat per day, is by fasting. Yeah, that's right. Not eating anything at all surprisingly turns out to be a very effective way to burn fat. Fasting also lowers your insulin levels more than any other type of dieting approach. When your body has no food for enough time, rather than releasing insulin, it releases glucagon to draw energy from your cells, including your fat cells. Having to eat all day long is not only a burden on your time, but it'll decrease the amount that you're allowed to eat per meal, decreasing the satisfaction you'll experience from each one of your meals, which ultimately increases the chances of you quitting your diet plan. When you fast, rather than having four or 400 calorie meals throughout the day, you can just have one 1,600 calorie meal at the end of the day. This would allow your meals to be a lot more enjoyable and it would also help you be a lot more productive throughout the rest of the day because you can get things done rather than constantly thinking about food. Most people believe in myths like eating late at night or eating too much at the same time will make you fat, but that's simply not true. Burning fat is about totals over time. Total calories taken in over the weeks, the days, and the months. Total insulin released over days, weeks, and months. If you spend two days of the week overeating and then you spend the other five days of the week strictly fasting, you're gonna wind up with a huge deficit and very low insulin levels, meaning you're gonna burn fat. Don't make the mistake of eating more often because you think that's the only way to burn fat. Now, I do have to mention that you totally can burn fat by eating more often, but only structure your diet this way if it actually helps you because there are many other ways to structure your diet plan to create a deficit, and there's many other ways that can be a lot more effective. The fourth mistake that many people still make is believing that you have to do hours and hours of cardio just to burn some fat. For those of you that love cardio, that's not a problem, but most people really don't like cardio. By going to the gym and spending hours every week doing something that you hate, you're increasing the chances of giving it up altogether. Well, the good news is that there are far more effective ways to burn some extra calories throughout the week without having to commit to long, boring runs on the treadmill or endlessly climbing up the stair stepper. One of the best ways to incorporate cardio without spending a ton of time at the gym is to incorporate it within your weight training sessions. My favorite way to do this without committing any extra time to the gym at all is with PHA, otherwise known as peripheral heart action training. Even though there's many different forms of PHA, one of the most effective for fat loss is one in which you combine a weight training based movement with a cardiovascular based movement. So you might do a set of bench press immediately followed by a set of burpees with a push up without taking a break in between the two exercises. Then you would take a break and repeat, and you would do this for every single one of your normal weight training exercises. So another example would be squats followed by 45 seconds of high knees. Now let's say that you came to the gym and you didn't want to do any cardio at all. Well, you can still trick yourself into incorporating cardio just by combining upper and lower body movements into supersets. So you could do a set of 10 reps of squats followed by a set of 10 reps of military presses. 
This causes your heart to work harder to pump the blood from the lower extremities to the upper extremities. And ultimately, it'll help you increase your breathing rate and your heart rate, allowing you to burn more calories. You can also do this by working the front and the back parts of your body. For example, you can do a chest press and then immediately follow that up with a barbell row. Even though this isn't quite as effective as combining an upper and a lower body movement, it'll still incorporate a lot more cardio than traditional weight training. The last mistake that I want to go over is falling for magic, fat burning pills, potions, and creams. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut to fat loss. Fat burning supplements will typically just increase your resting heart rate to very high, unhealthy levels. You can achieve the same effect by drinking tons of coffee, but I recommend you don't because not only is this effect very unhealthy, but it also doesn't produce the kind of long lasting results that you're looking for. There are pills out there that claim to be able to cancel out the carbs that you eat in your meals. So enjoy your pasta, your bread, and your pizza and whatever excess you want and just wash it down with a magical fat burner. Unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. Stay away from fat burners or any supplements that suggest that they'll help you burn fat faster because ultimately it's just gonna burn a hole in your pocket and damage your health. That's it guys, I really hope this video has helped you out. If you enjoyed it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Also, right now I'm running a six week challenge that has my clients losing an average of 20 pounds or 5% body fat in just 42 days. So if you want a done for you plan that's simple and you don't have to even think about it, click the link below and visit my website. You're gonna get an accountability coach that'll guide you through the entire workout and diet plan from day one to day 42. Also, if you simply follow and stick to the plan, you can get the results and the whole program for free. Click the link below to access it. The website is gravitytransformation.com. See you guys soon. Pump it.